Hello everyone, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how to create a cumulative calculation using DAX in Power BI. So currently if we look at our data, we've just got the single table called sales data. And within that, as you can see on the left, we've simply got two columns. One is every or the date in the last year, and then also a sales amount for that particular date. If we go back into our report, you can see we're currently able to put that on month. So we can see for each month, what was the total sales? And what we really want to do is to present this in a cumulative chart. So on the far right of the chart, we can see our current total. And then obviously for everything else, we can see how that has been accumulated over those, those period of months. So to do that, we just now need to add a few more um, tables and we're gonna just jump straight in. So if you go into modeling and do new table, we're gonna create a calendar table. So this is allows us to use this as our central table. Uh, it's not only important for this scenario, but it's a great, good, really good practice and useful um, in all of your reports, especially if you're trying to join multiple data sets based on date. So you can use two options. So we've got calendar or calendar auto. Uh, calendar auto will just automatically generate your calendar based on the dates within your report. But I like to have a bit more control and use calendar. You can uh, provide static start and end dates, but for us, we're simply gonna drive these off of the date column in our sales data. So our start date will be the min date within the date column. So let's go to sales data. And then the end date will be the opposite, which is going to be the max, but again, of that same column. So sales data there, close our brackets and hit enter. And then what we'll now have is our calendar table, which is basically a replica of our date table here. But for the starting, we've got this is what we need. The next thing we need to do, because we've now got more than one table, is to make sure we identify that relationship in the model. So if you go into your model tab down here, all we simply need to do is just connect the date from calendar to the date in sales data. And we can see that those two have now identified that relationship. So let's go back into report and we can now continue with building our actual measure. So if you've seen our previous videos before, you'll see we like to capture all of our measures in a separate table, just for easy way to organize. So all I'm gonna do is create a new table, and I'm gonna call this underscore measure. And the reason for adding an underscore at the start there is just to ensure that alphabetically it will appear at the top of our tables list in our fields pane down the side here. So I've called it measure, but I actually wanna call it measures, I know it's not really a big di difference, but it will help just to make things clearer. So we've got measures there. So what we need to do is as soon as we add our measure, we'll be able to delete this column and it will convert this to a measures table. Uh, but for the time being, let's just go new measure and we can crack on with doing our calculation. So for us, this is gonna be amount and it's gonna, and we're gonna call it CUML for cumulative. And we'll be using the calculate function that's too bad to do this. So the first thing to do, of course, is add the word calculate. And then the expression that we want to do is a sum of our field amount or sales data amount. And in order to do this cumulative over the period of time, we need the following filter expression, which is based on our newly added calendar table. So for us, that's going to be date and making sure we select it from our calendar date, which is now appearing at the top here, less than or equal to the max calendar date. Okay, and then you close brackets and that completes our function. So what this is doing here is it's basically saying when we do our cumulative calculation, we want at each month or date period, we want to calculate everything that is less than or and up to our, our max calendar date. So when it comes to working on a chart, if you're into say March 2022, what it would do is it would do the cumulative sum of everything that was less than or equal to March 2022. Likewise, when it gets to April, it will do the same, but now it'll go up until April 2022 to give you that cumulative picture all the way until the end, which will give us our final max value. So now that we've got our calculation over the right hand side here, we can now delete this column number one just to tidy up this table. Simply go and delete from model. And you'll see this table icon here is now changed to a measures icon. So again, just makes it all nice and tidy and keeps everything together. So what we can do here is we'll simply copy this chart we've got here. 
Uh, actually, no, let's, let's start a new one. So what we'll simply do is add a line chart, just so we can do this from the start, and line that with our current existing one. So this time I'm going to take our date field from our calendar column and put it into our x-axis. And then I'll take our amount cumulative and put it into our y-axis. And there you go, you can now see how this looks like we're using our cumulative calculation. And we can see that this is doing exactly what it should do. As we can see cumulatively, we've got a sum all the way up here until uh, March, or no, we've got until February, sorry. And then we know that in March there was zero amount, so we expect to see a flat line there. And then from April we start to see a gradual uptick. Now the data we've used to do this is all randomly generated, hence why you see this more or less straight line. But of course, if you're using real data, you'd expect to see more of a sort of maybe a stair, stair pattern as your data gradually builds up over time. So I hope that answered your question, if that's what you were searching for, or you've just learned something new uh, and available functionality you have using DAX in Power BI. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to hit that like button. And if this is your first time watching one of our videos, or you've seen them in the past and still yet to subscribe, could I please ask you to hit that subscribe button and also that bell notification button so you're notified of all of our videos as they come out in the future. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.